What is up, my Andronaut? Let's talk about tomatoes and testosterone and DHT. I don't know if you've been fear-mongered already that you should not be having tomatoes or lycopene because that inhibits 5 alpha reductase. It's going to crush your DHT. You're going to get erectile dysfunction, mental disorders. So stay away from tomatoes. I want to discuss the research and bring to clarity exactly what tomatoes and lycopene does for testosterone and your DHT. Let's dive in. So here was a study where they started giving rats lycopene and tomato powder in a diet. And this study was very short term. It's only four days long. And you dare it decreased their testosterone by approximately 40 to 50%. Massive decrease in testosterone, but then also DHT dropped only by 10%, which is very interesting. Despite this massive drop in testosterone, it only slightly lower DHT, which means that it doesn't inhibit 5-alpha reductase or it actually stimulates 5-alpha reductase. So this was the control group. This was the tomato paste group, and this was the lycopene. So tomato paste was slightly more potent at lowering testosterone and DHT. And this is because it probably contains a lot more compounds than just lycopene that could have an inhibitory effect. Then they also looked at the sterogenic enzymes. They looked at 17 beta HSD 2, 4, 3, PPAR, gamma. So 2 and 4 deactivates powerful antigens into weaker antigens. It converts testosterone and androstene diol to less potent antigens like androstene diol and the DHEA respectively. And then the number two also converts estradiol to estrol, a weaker estrogen, right? So it reduces the estrogenic burden, but it also deactivates your androgens. And I think the reason why it actually prevented the decrease in DHT is because it um, increased androstene dione and DHEA. And then androstene dione and DHEA can create DHT with a backdoor pathway going to androstrone all the way up to DHT instead of going from testosterone to DHT. So this is my main hypothesis why it didn't really draw. Then we have the 17 beta HSD3, which converts weaker androgens like androstene dione and DHEA to more potent androgens like testosterone, androstene and diol respectively. So here you can see that lycopene increased number two and number four and also increased number three. So there was some deactivation by increasing two and four, but also some activation by increasing number three. 5-alpha reductase, here you can see, interestingly, lycopene inhibited 5-alpha reductase to a small amount. So 1 was the standard, 0 0.8. So it basically decreased by about, let's say, 20%, which could be seen as significant. But compared to finasteride, finasteride is closer to 70, 80, 90%. So a 20% decrease, and this was a large dose of lycopene, isn't really significant. Versus the tomato base, there was an increase in 5-alpha reductase, which is, again, interesting, right? Um, and then we have PPAR gamma. So PPAR gamma serves as a transcription factor for the gene expression of adipocyte dedifferentiation and glucose homeostasis. It's also involved in SHBG regulation. DHT the most, tomato paste also increased 5-alpha reductase. And here you can see that tomato paste didn't increase the enzymes that deactivated androgens, but it also didn't increase the enzyme that activated it. So it seems to have a little bit of a neutral effect on the sterogenic enzymes that regulate hormones, but it also didn't inhibit 5-alpha reductase. Then we have another study that was more long-term. So as I mentioned, the previous study where they lowered testosterone and uh, testosterone by 40 to 50% was a four-day study. It's very short-term. So this was tomato on testosterone long-term. They had a control diet, 10% tomato diet. They compared it to finasteride, 10% broccoli diet, 5% 5 by 5 combination and 10 by 10 combination. 10% broccoli didn't increase testosterone, but then we have a 5% and 5% combination of tomato and broccoli. So based on this animal studies, a 5% combination of tomato and broccoli increased testosterone slightly. I do not want everyone to go bonkers on tomatoes and broccoli right now. It's probably not going to have the same effect in humans. This might have been an interesting finding in animals. It's not going to do the same thing in humans. The emphasis here is that tomatoes doesn't lower testosterone when consumed in the long run, mainly only in the short run. Then we have lycopene. This is another study, again, long-term on testosterone and DHT. Lycopene supplementation very slightly decreased testosterone, very slightly decreased DHT. They said it was really insignificant and it didn't actually lower it. So the study emphasized that it didn't affect testosterone DHT despite the very small difference. So I would, even if you supplement large amounts of lycopene, it's probably not going to affect your testosterone and DHT when you use it in the long run. Would I do it? Probably not. I would rather use ketchup if I had prostate cancer. There is some studies suggest that it can be helpful for that regard. So I'm not going to supplement lycopene maybe use some tomato based instead. Tomato diet increases testosterone. So this was another animal study. 
tomato diet increased testosterone, but only if it converted into vitamin A. So we have this CMO enzyme, which converts beta carotene into retinol. And when they deleted this enzyme, you can see it didn't increase testosterone. There was serum testosterone and this was a lycopene. So this was tomato diet and lycopene diet. So when they cut out the enzyme that converts beta carotenes into testosterone, these animals, like this was the increase in testosterone from the tomato diet without the enzyme, a drop in testosterone. Lower levels of vitamin A equals lower levels of testosterone. So when you inhibit one enzyme, this enzyme becomes significantly upregulated. So instead of creating vitamin A or retinol, you're now creating toxic aldehydes, which is then lowering testosterone. So this is possible why um, it lower testosterone. It's not that you maybe need the retinol to create testosterone, although there is evidence to su suggest that you do. It's rather that the aldehydes was lowering testosterone. So it could be a combination of both. You need retinol and you do not need the aldehyde. And this is why testosterone dropped. So again, if you just look at serum testosterone and testicular testosterone tomato diet, it went up in these animals. It didn't affect SHBG or total testosterone, but it increased estradiol. You can see that in the largest group, 45 milligrams of lycopene, estradiol did go up, but it also went up in the placebo group. So this could have been a really insignificant change is most likely not due to the lycopene specifically. And then it's also been shown that dietary carotenoids inhibit estrogen signaling of a 17 beta estradiol and can potentially attenuate their deleterious effect in hormone dependent malignancies like tumors and cancer. So it seems that lycopene and the beta carotenoids in uh, tomatoes can be anti estrogen. Although the study did say that there wasn't an increase in SSPG, there seemed to be a slight increase in SSPG in the largest dose. But then also you can see a slight increase in free testosterone in the largest dose. So even if SSPG goes up, free testosterone also went up. Tomatoes and lycopene impact the expression of androgen receptor co-regulators. Tomato and lycopene has been reported to inhibit prostatic steroid binding protein MRR in microRNA expression, androgen receptor co-regulator protein DJ1, paxillin, SREBP, and an antigen receptor stabilizing chaperone protein, heat shock protein 90, in the prostate of healthy rats, and also the Dunn rat model and human primary prostate epithelial cells. So a lot of people thought that antigen comes in, testosterone DHT, bind to the antigen receptor, do what it's supposed to do. But it's a lot more complex. The antigen receptor is stabilized by heat shock protein 90, right? So it enhances the function of it, and then it gets transported into the nucleus of the cell, where there are multiple co regulators as well as the antigen response element. And all of this machinery have to work smoothly together to induce transcription of DNA, right? So it seems to be that tomatoes and specifically lycopene could mess with these co-regulators. If that's in a good way or in a bad way, it's not actually exactly being specified. So there you have it. If you have been fear-mongered that you should be avoiding tomatoes or lycopene for the fear of lowering DHT, that's very unlikely that's not going to happen. There is a in vitro study showing that lycopene inhibits 5 alpha reductase, but if you actually look at the studies, the long-term studies in rats, which is better evidence than in vitro, there's no decrease in testosterone or DHT. So chances are you can eat your ketchup or tomatoes and whatever you want to without the fear that it's going to mess with your hormones. So really do not placebo yourself because placebo can also be powerful. Now, if you would like to maximize your testosterone via diet, gut health, micronutrient optimization, lifestyle optimization, anything that you can think of, Tesotribe is your place to be. That is where low testosterone goes to die. All of my courses are on, the, are on there, how to maximize your testosterone, DHT, prolactin, estrogen, free testosterone, etc., etc. Also, if you sign up, you can get a free call with me to optimize everything, to dial in your protocol so you can get the best results possible. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed this video, learned something new, and I will check you in the next one. Cheers, guys. Thank you.